Am I recording? What up, tool users? It's V here again, and I'm in my cool, groovy new studio. Hopefully the sound is good enough. This is just a, a quickie. Um, I got a new toy. This is a uh, pan and tilt head controller for the action camera that I'm going to be using for Ranger's radio. So look. I'm adding in the sound. I thought I'd give you have a look at my studio. So I've got my decks. Um, two cans of spray paint are in the, the first speaker down there. It's all my records. So uh, I spray painted these speakers a lovely shade of olive green. And got it hooked into my decks. And if you look across, there's the other speaker. And my disco lights there. Mm, there. The only problem with this pan and tilt head is it is a cheapy one, so it gets to a certain point and then drops. Like it will do any second now. There you go. So it's got like a loose bit somewhere, but I did get it cheap. So got disco lights, decks, fairy lights. If you have a look back there, there's another one of those camouflage screens spray painted by me. Um, these were originally TGI Friday stand-ups. Um, they're like um, freestanding posters. Let's see if we can get you a good view. So they, they're these huge, sort of three foot by by like eight foot thingies that stand up <coughs> taller than the screen, and they had, you know, the normal corporate advertising for an advertising campaign and they were going to be got rid of and binned so yeah so they were going to be binned so rather than be landfill I thought I could do something useful with them and um, so I've kind of got two of those both painted camouflage got my decks the table I built out of an old bed frame that was being thrown away near me so I disassembled that and used all the planking and supports to uh, build a nice DJ table there's like more or less my entire record collection down below it. And obviously in the previous ones we see the camouflage nets. Those are over two military bashers. So it looks like nice and deep. You've got a deep green thing off those. Oh. And yeah. And there's the other stand-up thing. Yeah, so I was looking at the PC screen there because I wanted to make sure I was getting the right stuff in shot. So yeah, so the studio's kind of in. I'm just using my normal podcasting equipment, a nice little Behringer mini mixer, and maybe we'll do some stuff. I'll definitely be doing some stuff with the vinyl, um, the decks, so I can do uh, scratched vinyl, which is another channel that's coming up, but a little bit unrelated, but still of a ranger's mindset. It's about um, record collecting and why you might and what to collect and how to get hold of cheap kits so you're not being fleeced. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the studio. It's pretty much hand-built. I don't think, including the lights, I um, I don't think I've spent more than 150 quid, but that was over a long period of time. Like recent, I've just been scavenging things. I mean, things like the, if you look, the speaker stand behind me, that's basically a piece of junk that was going to be thrown out and I repurposed. Um, everything that's green or anything like that has been spray painted by me, so it's it's kind of a, uh, a like a DIY set. You know, I've used lots of hazard tape and uh, got an old amplifier, but two very nice decks that I got cheap from a thrift store, and and they work perfectly. So um, so that's just a tour of the studio, and I wanted to to show off the pan and tilt head because that's kind of fun. Apart from the fact it does stuff like that, it probably needs opening up and having a look at. 
So we could do without that. But it is a nifty thing, and interestingly, it will also power the camera. But I need the I want the camera communications. There we go. We just leave it like that. I want the camera communications to be, <coughs> you know, continuous, so I don't have to take the camera thing off. I'm using OBS Studio, which, if you've never used, it's well worth a play with. Gives you essentially a TV studio with multiple cameras. Um, the action cam itself isn't going to be what I use for much of Rangers TV unless it's an outside broadcaster I'm recording something I don't know if I'm gonna get footage because the angle of the screen is like 170 um, degrees so it's massive so it does distort as you can see everything's got a slight curve to it but I think it's worth it for having like an easy setup for live streaming so um, on to the second bit that I'm doing this recording for Essentially, um, I'm just going to plug two magazines that I think are worth having. Um, so, right, so the first one is, uh, these are a bit beat up because I've taken them to work and stuff like that because they're, they're a good read, is Hackspace magazine. It's only just come out. It's on its second issue now. So the uh, this is the one that you'd see in the shops. And it's really good. I don't normally buy magazines. <laughs> I mean, I haven't bought magazines for years and years and years. But um, the people at the Magpie sent over a first you, you could sign up and get like the first issue free which is really interesting and it's got some really interesting reviews with makers and stuff like that and they've i don't know if i can show you this it's worth having a thumb through it they really will go through lots of useful bits i mean you know it literally is all the all the tool skills so it's it, it should be called tool, tool tool user magazine really so, uh, you know, it's got all sorts of things on welding and woodworking in the first issue. And it had lots of tech stuff like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. And in the second issue, they covered 3D printing and laser cutting. So I'm wondering what tools they're running out of. But it also does like low tech skills like crochet and how to make your own knife and stuff like that. How to make a forged knife. So I'm going to really recommend that. It's worth having a look at, at least if you only have a look at it in WH Smith's or any other news agent that carries it but it's mostly going to be the big news agents so uh, might be worth running into town and having a look at that um, this is out this month which is why I'm putting it out now it's kind of like elder this one this is a good issue um, it's one of those things where I understand that you can get all the information that you might find in a magazine on the internet but sometimes it's real handy to have it to hand so you can go back a page and stuff like that while you're doing the thing um, on the second magazine which I didn't think I was going to recommend but then I did some maths is the Raspberry Pi beginners book and I'm super recommending that um, purely because um, the book itself is much better than I thought it would it comes with like a magazine but the cool thing is it comes with um, a Raspberry Pi 0W like the wireless version of the Raspberry Pi 0 and uh, all the uh, aggravational cables to get so like a USB to get on the go cable and an HDMI adapter and like a three-part case um, so you could either it's, it's got one for the Raspberry Pi camera one so you can access the GPIO pins and a standard case which gives you access to the rear GPIO pins including the reset switch and the TV out pins so I'll just pop this open. I put mine in there, but it also comes with an eight gigabyte micro SD card. Um, and I did the math and you're, the book is expensive for a magazine. It's 25 pounds, but I would call it a book rather than a magazine because it gives you a starting place for all sorts of projects and does it in a way that's me friendly. Like it's very simple, gives you nice GPIO connector, how to set stuff up, how to do the programming in Python. So it's like a Python baby steps manual, which I need. And um, it did literally gave me all sorts of answers to all sorts of questions that I had and links. So this is like how to embed button presses into Python, all the sorts of things I'm wanting to work on for a project I've got right now. And I'll be using this. So when I added it up, the Pi Zero W which is one with integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a camera port, is about 11 quid. The 
micro SD card you could pay as much as five quid for, and it's a good quality one. It's SanDisk, and it already has the Noob software on it. I reckon the case. This is the official Raspberry Pi Zero three-part case, and it's a good case. It's 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 really really good, and it's even got a like a camera out port. I don't know if you can see that there. It's got a camera out port from the main base unit. So I think you'd probably pay about five pounds for that. So we're up to twenty pounds, and these, even if you buy them from China, are at least a pound each. And these are the official Raspberry Pi ones, so you could expect to pay about a fiver for those. I remember I paid about eighteen pound fifty for the Raspberry Pi Zero starter kit, which had the connectors that you needed and some header pins, and the header pins you can get anywhere. So I reckon you'll possibly get inserts ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. So the the magazine costs twenty-five pounds. And you get £25 of Raspberry Pi stuff with it. So you're essentially getting a book for free. And the book is really good. If you're at all thinking about getting a Raspberry Pi or tinkering about with it or using it as project, uh, a project base to do something cool with, they'll even show you how to build a set. They literally show you how to do stuff. Um, and a lot of these magazines and a lot of these, uh, a lot of the magazines, I mean, the Magpie, for instance, doesn't in my experience show you exactly how to do stuff it's good for ideas and stuff but it's not up to the standard that this is i mean this is from the makers of magpie the magpie but if you're thinking about doing anything with a raspberry pi <coughs> excuse me <coughs> if you're thinking about doing anything with a raspberry pi um this is actually cheaper than a raspberry pi model 3 and you get all the extra bits all you'd really need is an hdmi capable display and uh, a keyboard and mouse and you've got everything else there. And then the traditional problem with the Raspberry Pi is, say, the Pi, the original Pi Zero cost £5, but even you're going to have to spend an extra £10-£15 to get all the bits and the connectors and stuff like that to get it to work, plus you needed a monitor and a keyboard and mouse. Whereas this, I think if you had like one of those miniature mouse and keyboard combos, you could just plug that straight in. Um, they give you the on-the-go connector, which is diamond. You can use for power supplies like you can plug it into a PC with a micro USB cable but it's a, it's a really good way of starting to build either an internet of things project or you can do things like build a standalone mp3 player because it's got audio out if you're prepared to make an adjustment to the um, HDMI connector you can get little HDMI to VGA connectors that will have an audio out um, so I was really really surprised but I, I looked at it for a couple of weeks which is why I'm doing this video now it's why I'm putting it out as soon as I am because if you want to get it it's selling out pretty quick because once you do the math once you figure out that you know you're getting a free book plus all the bits for a Raspberry Pi Zero W you know uh, it's excellent that's an excellent combination of stuff and yes they may be just reiterating stuff that's been in the Magpie but all in one place I found out so much information about a project that I'm wanting to do. Hint, it's infrared night vision goggles for less than £60. And I think I'm beating that. But one of one of these, I've got two other Raspberry Pi Zeros. I've got the um, Zero C and the, the original Zero. So I really, really rate this. This is a fantastic combination of bits with a free book, essentially. And the book's brilliant. The, the book is very, very clear. Um, it's even got, you know, example Python code. Um, it's got all the hack bits for the onboard for version of Minecraft. Um, I just I just really rate it, you know, how to plug in electronics to the GPIO. Overruns of, you know, how to build simple projects so that you can actually attach it. And in a way, you can use it as a very, very smart Arduino if you want. But with the ability to connect to an HDMI or a... Um, uh, an RCA, what's it, a composite video screen. And I'll be doing that. I'll be connecting this up for a composite video screen because the um, the goggle base that I've bought um, takes composite video. So I can literally plug this with the Raspberry Pi camera module into the side here and connect it directly to the goggles, which cuts out like two or three little bits of equipment and a lot of cabling. So yeah, so I will be showing you my work on that project. And... Um, so kicking the camera and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so this is my f this is like the first 
piece of Rangers TV, I guess, although I'm doing it in the Rangers radio setup with the microphone and everything. It's just easier and quicker to get it out to you. I'll get it uploaded. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that was useful to you. I thoroughly recommend those two products, you know, the Hackspace magazine and the Raspberry Pi beginner's book. You might already have all the things, but I'm going to be building projects with, with at least one Raspberry Pi Zero, and it might be fun to hook it up in such a way as it's got Wi-Fi, so it's, you know, it was well worth it for me. Yeah, what do you think? Um, tell me what you think about the studio. You know, this is all DIY. I use loads of spray paint. I use like a lot of spray paint, about 40 quid's worth of spray paint. Um, but I think the effect's worth it. Um, oh yeah, the disco lights yonder, they were um, eight pounds in a local junk shop and I couldn't resist them for that. Um, so yeah, so we've got the lights, we've got the studio. This is where a lot of Rangers TV and Rangers Radio is going to have, and we're going to keep up with the outside broadcast stuff. There's lots of new bits coming, so keep them peeled, and I'll try and get some decent Rangers TV out to you within the next week. So this is just some fill-in so you've got something to watch, but thank you very much for watching anyway, and thanks to my sponsors, Graffin and Avagdu. We'll be setting up a Patreon page soon. I hate to shill for money, but I'm in a really crappy job, uh, and I'd like to do more of this. I'd like to you know, be able to go on, go and do more things. Um, definitely want to bring you video from EMF this year. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to afford a ticket unless I scrimp and save from now until September, by which all the tickets will be gone. So if you feel like helping out, uh, there will be Patreon details below. And I'm afraid for everything that we put out from now on, I'm going to put the Patreon link in. And we'll see what we can do with that. And I'll keep you in the loop and I'll be as transparent as possible as to what I've done with the money. Generally speaking, it's going to be going on buying stuff for the show, um, buying things to review because nobody's sending us any review stuff and uh, if you could support that it'd be great i feel very awkward about that but you know it would help um and maybe we could help some other people as well okay brilliant